All right. We is live. Bismillah. So, let me just send a <coughs> message. And till then, you guys can tune in. As always, click like, click share, people. And I'll just let my Patreons know, my Discord group, that I've gone live. Um, all right. Right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna alhamdulillahi wa kafa, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulih al-Mustafa, wa ala ibadi al-Ladin al-Tada, wa man bihudah mihtada, wa bi-athari ahli al-Madin taqtafa, wa ba'd, fa salamu Allahi ala al-Qawm. All right, let me just straighten this up as well, mm-hmm. I'll take a look at your comments as well. Right. All right. Salam from Houston. Houston. Allahu Akbar. All right. Uh, all right. Hussein. Uh, Banajan. Allah bless you. Likewise. Allah bless you too. Are you open? <laughs> to coming on a podcast i have my own podcast mind trap but sure i mean you can reach out i have to begin mind trap again resume it so i'm eagerly waiting to do that so inshallah and as that's up and running then sure can i join your discord group um mm -hmm, you can but my discord group is part of my patreon so you have to you know, in Ramadan, the chai just hits differently, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, Elaichi Dar, huh? With Elaichi and Kya Baat Hai Yaar. Yeah, so you can. And uh, what you will... Um, let me... If I write... So, so let me just stop this. And that's some of the verses we're going to take a look at today. But I wanted to just for a quick second just show. Yeah, so you see at the bottom the Patreon. Um, right, yeah. I'll, the Patreon.com forward slash Malm. And then you can go there and from there. Uh, it does have tiers to it, so you can add yourself to a tier that you like. It has simple tiers, and then it has right up to one-to-one -one monthly consultations as well. For So, yeah, feel free, feel free. Right. Vampires. BK Cheese Distributor. Hello, Mufti. Your teaching helped me embrace Islam. Well, I'm truly touched and honored. Allah bless you. Bless your journey. You know, this is a journey that we are all on. You know, it's not. And um, we help each other along the way. That's what we do. So, yeah, Allah bless you. Keep you smiling and and Allah unveil for you his mysteries. Amin. <laughs> Samuel Imam, how are you vampires? Yeah, that's it, man. Hashtag uh, the last boys, uh, the last boys. That's it. I've always had a vampiric streak to me, you know. Vampires, huh? I had the fangs as well. <laughs> <laughs> Allahu Akbar from Australia. Right. And salams from Miss Swag Mrs. Swaga. Mrs. Soga. Mrs. Soga. All right. Hasim says after after a long time. True. Or maybe not. I have had a few sessions in between. Maybe you've uh, we've all been busy, 
And I've just seen your message here. I'm going through hard times, bro. Allah bless you. You know, these times that we go through that appear to us difficult and hard, they are defining us. You know, it's a, a diamond being with precision carved from carbon. It's gold being purified. It's, it's all how we see things. And I would say, you know, see it as, don't say to yourself that in a, I'm going through, say to yourself, you know, I'm going through a character developing, a defining stage in my life. Okay, this is interesting. Smile. Against all the odds, smile. You know, if, well, somebody could say, well, you know, what is there to smile about? You know, well, even if it's going down, let's say the ship is sinking, let's just smile then. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's going down anyway. You know, you, you, this is a perspective as well, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the, well, why not? You know, somebody said, well, why? Well, why not? <laughs> See, and in that, all of a sudden, the divine mysteries unveil themselves. And as you fall, Allah will catch you. Sometimes, you know, we're pushed, we're, we're at the brink of despair. And then we just fall. <laughs> Has Allah ever let you down before today? You know, before this time. You know, he's caught you every time. And you didn't come this far to just come this far. So hang in there. And this is for everyone. And I would like to, you know, with that, uh, just bring that into the verses I want to share with us today. Because, um, so, Jazakallah, Allah bless you, Sahib. And we'll, we'll pick up from there. You know, Because we, right, sorry, I was just reading a comment. <laughs> Allah rahi na taakate guftar agar ho bhi, to kis umid se kehiye ke arzu kya? Hai, 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 hai. But this is, this is what I'm saying, that sometimes, in hindsight, it is the adventure that makes it. And the adventure is 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 hard on the nerves sometimes, but we're so immersed in the adventure. You know, a if you were to bring yourself down to a state that is that is meaningful, it's often not happy, although. Happiness is, is something we undoubtedly desire. And that is to say joy. But happy, I mean, it's wonderful. And we all want to be happy. But happy is just, <laughs> you know, not much is accomplished in just happiness. Happiness is it in itself is is a reward, you know, we, we absorb it. <sighs> Allah. But the times in which and the states in which you are actually achieving and thriving, you'll find yourself if, <coughs> you know, if you're to take a picture of yourself or a recording, you look somewhat Tense almost. You know, you'll appear immersed in something, even if it's in reflection. Or as you steer into the horizon, that stare, that glance, it appears tense, but it's not a negative tension. It's actually a constructive one. 
And this is what I want today to us for us to understand that many things that if you find yourself in anxiety, is it anxiety or is it awe? You see, many feelings deep within, they can be interpreted identically. Like, you see, what it, when a person is frightened, let's say, there is a, or, or let's say anxious, nervous, frightened could have a slightly different uh, effect. But let's say a person, person is anxious, nervous, what is going on? You know, palms are sweaty, sweating, palpitations, uh, you know, they, they've got, you know, something going on in a gut feeling. It's something in the gut you know, turmoil. Now, what is the exact same feeling of excitement? It is identical to that. Hot, bracing fast, sweaty palms, blood pumping, so you may be sweating, butterflies in the stomach. The interior is the same. In one situation, a person is excited. In another, they are anxious, nervous. What's making the difference is the meaning that they are giving to it. How they are seeing something. And this brings us to a verse which we where we left off last, last week. That uh, we did discuss it, but in more detail. That Surah Dhariyat, verse 56. That A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa liya'abutun. Ma uridu minhum min rizqim. Wa ma uridu an yut'aymun. Inna Allah huwa al-razzaqu dhul quwwat al-mateen. Allah. That I did, did not create jinn and insan, except that they worship me. And we discussed this previously, that why, and to elaborate upon this, to understand our story. Why did Allah create us? Why did he create anything? You know, the, the, Heide, the, the Heideggerian, why is there something as opposed to nothing. Why did Allah create? And that stems from our story because somebody might be going through a hard time, somebody might be going through depression, somebody might be going through a nervous breakdown, through anxiety, through, and then why has Allah created me like this? Why has Allah even created me? Why am I here? Why is anything here? So this taps into all of that. So this verse we have here, that, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Ma, Allah says, did not create them. And some of the people, the kuffar of Quraysh, would worship jinn. Whatever they understood that to mean, you know, some entities that... Allah says everything, you know, these things you worship and insan. I did not create except, and here, illa liya'abudun, as a consequence, they worship me. Ma uridu minhum min rizqin, wa ma uridu in yut'aymu. I did not create them so... They worship, so they provide for me, for Allah. I don't ask them for risk, for sustenance or provision. Inna Allah huwa razzaq dhul quwwatil Allah is the one who, through his infinite abundance, provides indefinitely. 
Nobody can do that. Your relationship like that is with nobody. But Allah. No matter how or what you're doing, Allah has still written rizq for you. And with that in mind, you can see here, this was just to, um, to explain, let me just bring this further, that you've got, um, that's from the Arab Al-Quran, as you can see it, uh, if we read down to where it says لِيَعْبُدُونَ It's the fourth line down مُضَارِئْ مَنْسُوب بِأَنْ مُضْمَرَ بَعْدَ لَامِ الْعَاقِبَةِ This is not لَا مُتَعْلِيلِ This is not for causation This is as a consequence You see, this is Tafsir al-Maraghi uh, As an example There's many Tafsirs that have said this um, It says as you can go to the verse, خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ On the third line, اَيْ وَمَا خَلَقْتُمْ إِلَّا لِيَعْرِفُونَ إِذْ لَوْ لَا خَلَقَهُمْ لَمْ يَعْرِفُوا وُجُودِي وَلَا تَوْحِيدِي Had Allah not created, how would they have come to know Allah's being, His wujud, this is a, an important word we're going to come back to. That was to show uh, this way of looking at this verse. And here are some examples in the Quran where you see Lam al Aqiba as a consequence they worship me. Because there's many people who see Allah created us so we worship Him, he created us to worship Him. That could be, that, that's a lower order understanding of this verse. A higher order understanding. It's not he created us to worship him. He created us to know him and through us to know himself. He's, he is the eyes by which he sees creation through us. Through our consciousness, Allah witnesses his creation. As in the hadith, and we'll come to that in a moment where Allah is saying this. I was the eyes by which they see. And witness the splendor and the majesty of Allah's glory. As a consequence, we worship Allah. Consequently, out of gratitude. We worship Allah. And this Lam al Aqiba, so Lam in Arabic can come for many reasons, amongst them Ta'aleel as a cause. So I say, You did this to do that. You know, Ta'alamtu li'akuna tabiban, for example, I studied to become a doctor. You did something as a cause, or one of the other reasons, as a consequence. And here's some examples in the Quran where it's speaking as a consequence. So you see Surah Qasas. فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلَ فِرْعُونَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًّا وَحَزْنًا Now, here, the family or the people of Pharaoh took Moses so he may be an enemy for them. This is as a baby, when they took him, baby Moses, alayhi salam. This is, they didn't take him. It says in the Quran, قَرَّتْ عَيْنٍ لِي وَلَكْ Like, he took him so he could, Please, it could be a sense of joy for himself and his, his wife. But here Allah is saying they took him so that he could be an, an enemy for them, an opposition for them. As a consequence, he was an opposition for them. This lamb is lil aqiba. Here's another one. It's to do with Pharaoh's again. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأُوا زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Ya Allah, you gave Fir'aun and his people, wealth and splendor in this world. Ya Allah, it's not so, you didn't give them so they could misguide people. You gave them and as a consequence they misguide people. This is Lam al Aqiba. The Lam as a consequence. Okay. 
Here's another one on about the Day of Judgment, Surah An-Nahl, verse 25. لِيَحْمِلُوا أَوْزَارَهُمْ كَامِلَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُدِلُّونَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ عَلْمِ That people did sins in this world, لِيَحْمِلُوا أَوْزَارَهُمْ So they may carry their burden on the Day of Judgment. Obviously, they didn't do that so they could carry it. They did this as a consequence they carry their burden. You got Surah Fatir, verse 6. Innama yad'u hizbahu. So people who call. Now you've got this speaking about kufr. Innama yad'u hizbahu. Or one could say about the shaitan. Or if you want to take it generically. Somebody who calls his kind. Liyakunu min ashab sa'id. So that they may be people of the hellfire. Now obviously he doesn't call them to be people of the hellfire. But as a consequence, they are people of the hellfire. And a very famous verse as well, and this is um, in Surah Nahl, and you can see, uh, let me just, this is frozen, okay. Um, okay, so, وَلَا تَقُولُ And this is Surah Nahl 116 again, um, and you can see there that, Right, sorry, it's not. Uh, yeah, ولا تقولوا هذا حلال وهذا حرام لتفتروا على الله الكذب. Do not say, do not describe with your tongues this is halal and this is haram. Now, one way is to see that, oh, uh, in a lying way, لما تصفوا ألسنتكم الكذب. When your tongues, what they describe are lies, falsehood, that this is halal and this is haram. لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ So that you may be propagating a lie against God. Now here, as you can see from there, I mean, you may not see even, it says, look, the lamb is لِلْعَاقِبَةِ Because it's not, it, you're not doing it to, but as a consequence, you're lying against God. Now, I'm going to bring this all back to this verse, but here was... Um, Another interesting part of the same verse, the tafsir, you've got, and I thought I'd just share this, that no, right, so um, um, this, uh, what's in red right at the top, a hadith, لَوْ فَرَّ أَحْدُكُمْ مِنْ رِزْقِهِ لَتَبِعَهُ كَمَا يَتْبَعُهُ الْمَوْتِ If a person tried to flee from their risk, it would chase them down to the corners of the earth. <laughs> Allah. Look how Allah has written our provisions. That we, wherever you flee to, Allah says, my risk will chase you. Risk, good thing, provision. So, and there's a hadith that, um, so, مَنْ كَانَتَ الْآخِرَةَ هَمَّهُ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ Whoever had focused on the union with God, the Akhirah. Akhirah really is about our return to God. It says Allah placed a richness in their heart. And the world shall be opened up to these people. Even if it does not want to, even if the world didn't rebel, it would still be opened up to this. See, whoever chases after something, it seems to run from them. And this was a quote by Mahasabi, uh, who said that he says to his sheikh that why do people then, where, where is this doubt and anxiety coming from? And he says, وقد, and even though Allah has taken it upon himself and guaranteed people's uh, risk, he said, by, but it is by two things. That one, that they have lack 
knowing God. They lack ma'rifa. And they lack husn al Thinking well of Allah always. That Allah always will catch them. And ثم قال قلت شيئا غيره قال نعم. He said Allah promised risk, sustenance, you know, providence. Allah promised all of this, but he hid the timing in so that it may be a test for people. Now, so this is bringing back, and I'll just, so why did Allah create us? And so we've been taking a look one way is it is to know him but what's the story behind that i want you to pause for a moment i want you to understand that there is a divine story of love a story of divine love God's love manifesting. And you, you are a manifestation and an integral part of that story, of this divine love story, this story of divine radical love. What is it? Now, I want to bring our attention to what Ibn Arabi often cites, Sheikh Ibn Arabi, right throughout the Futuhat, and a very famous Hadith Qudsi, and I'll come to the discussion on its Isnad and stuff uh, afterwards. But this is a Hadith, Hadith Qudsi, where Allah says, Kuntu kanzan la arab. And it does, there is another riwayah, Kuntu kanzan makhfi, and I was a hidden treasure. But this version, Ibn Arabi, often the, the top one, the former, cites it more often, almost invariably right throughout, that I was a treasure, and this is in the passive sense, not known. La Araf, I was not known. That kuntu kanzan la Araf, I was a treasure in which that I was not known. Now, now look at this word, فَأَحْبَبْتُ But I loved Allah, but I loved an أُعْرَف That I may be known. That my ma'rifa is observed. My known, knowingness, my knownness is celebrated. It's worshipped. It is reflected. I loved for ahbabtu in Arabic. Ahbab is from hope, from love. Ahbabtu an u'raf. Faqalaqtu khalqan. So I created creation. Fata'arraftuhum bi. In this, sometimes it says fa'arraftu, fa'arraftuhum bi. In some it says fata'arraftuhum bi. And I allowed them, I enabled them to know me. فَعَرَفُونِي فَعَرَفْتُهُمْ بِي I made them come to know of me. فَعَرَفُونِي And so they know me. So they knew me. This is the reason why creation exists. It exists because Allah is a treasure and he, and he loved to be known. And you and I know him. So it begins with this loving. There is this ma'rifa and by this loving, this divine love, the result by the end of it is being emerges, a state of beingness. 
So you and I, we are all part of that. See, we all never think of yourself in an insignificant way. Through you and by you, the glory of God is manifest. That we, none of us are here. Allah says he did not create you abathan. None of us are here are insignificant. You're not a statistic. You're not just a number. You, it is through your senses, through you, a witnessing and the witnessed takes place. You see, and a verse in the Quran that is a bit similar to this, Allah says, وَعِنْدَهُمْ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ That with Allah are the خَزَائِنُ الْغَيْبِ The treasures of the unseen. And that could include many things. But ultimately, the ultimate treasure is God himself. Above all these are the treasures of the ghayb. So this verse has some echo of that Hadith Qudsi. And you can see here, this is Ibn Arabi once again citing this. Now, we see, I want to actually bring our attention to this hadith, because somebody could say, well, okay, I'm trying to grasp this. But how does Allah observe? This hadith, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, it begins, it's a very famous hadith. In Allah Qal, hadith Qudsi, Man adali waliyan faqad adantu bil harb. Whosoever opposes a wali of mine, I have announced and declared war upon that person. And then Allah says, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ a servant of mine, a person of mine, does not draw nearer to me except by that which I have mandated and obligated and told them to do as a duty. And they do that and they draw so close. And then it says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يتقرب. And then my person continues to draw even nearer to me بالنوافل, with things I haven't even mandated. <laughs> but he is or she is celebrating this love, this gratitude of mine. They are feeding people. They are seeing somebody sad. They are helping them. They're seeing somebody sick. They are visiting them. Nawafil here doesn't just doesn't mean praying nafal. It means those actions which Allah has not mandated. But yeah. They are the true testimony of humanity. That you see somebody helpless, you help them. You see somebody upset, you console them. You see somebody poor, hungry, you feed them. That they continue until hatta or hibba, until I love them, Allah says. I love that person. Who, I mean, if Allah loves us, <laughs> nothing else matters. Look, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ When I love them. فَإِذَا And then, I love them. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I was the ears by which he's heard. وَبَصْرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْسِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يُبْتِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا Who Allah is seeing through your eyes. بَصْرَهُ الَّتِي يُبْسِرُ بِهَا يُبْسِرُ بِهَا Allah, and Allah does not say, I became. One could interpret it like that. But the verse, but the actual hadith is saying, كُنْتُ I was already the eyes by which they saw. They just didn't realize it. But I was always the eyes by which they saw. 
But now it's become a realization for them. It's dawned on them into their consciousness. They, they walk with God. That Allah says, I am the foot by which they walk. We just didn't know it. Allah through us witnesses his glory. And it mentions here that, look, to the extent that if he whatever my person asks me, I give him. If he seeks refuge, I protect him. I always protect him. Even when we don't seek refuge, Allah protects us. There is nothing more turbulent, Allah says, more hesitant. Not that Allah, Allah is describing this from his, from his love. Not as Allah isn't affected by things like turbulence, but he's speaking about this from the angle of love. That there is nothing that is more upsetting in that sense to Allah to to do something that the person does his his person his believer it, they dislike it detest it like death that they detest dying and that's one thing Allah says wa ana akrahu masa'atahu and i hate to displease my person but the hadith says that wala buddha minhu. But there is no avoiding that. You see, but no avoiding that because it is through that portal. Death is just a portal. It is through that portal we reunite with Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji. That without that, we could not go to the next stage. So, this is how we ought to be seeing, ought to be viewing our relationship, this whole story. And notice in this hadith Qudsi, Kuntu Kanzan Makhfiyan. Just a play on words, Kun to Kun, the divine command Kun. Kun to. Can once again kun can zan. I was just observing that, thinking, wow, you know, there's a lot of kun be be in the subtext subconsciously kun to kan zan machfiyan or la or araf, which is a much more beautiful interpretation of that uh, same hadith and. And this is a verse which I want to wrap this up with. So when we think of why did Allah create anything? Why did he create us? Why am I in this anxiety? You know, I said in the beginning, is excitement the same phenomenological experience as anxiousness, as nervousness? And it is. You know, it's palpitations, uh, something in the gut, a feeling in the gut, butterflies, you know, a uh, heart is pacing. We've got a sweaty, you know, sweating palms, sweat, all this, which is exactly the same as excitement phenomenologically. So when we're experiencing anxiety, is it that or is it all? What if it's because the inner Ruh knows of a time. It knows of a bond. It has a yearning. When Allah said, Alastu <laughs> birabbikum, qalu bala. The soul knows it said indeed. And taqulu, this, that, you know, what if, and is it that later on you will say, inna kunna an hadha? Allah. Allah says, 
Or is it that you will in time to come say, oh, we you know, not that we didn't know, we got distracted. <laughs> we got distracted. So this is to me a very beautiful way of looking at not only our story, but answering the question, why? Why are we here? It is because Allah wanted to be known. He enabled us. He drew himself nearer to us. And thus we knew him. He enabled us to know him. He made us familiar with him. You see. And then he knew us and he knew us knowing him. So, whenever we struggle, whenever we think sometimes things are too burdensome, they are too, uh, you know, what, what is going on? What is, Ya Allah, why, why, why have you done this? I want us to bring our attention to Surah Infitar, you know, the shattering. <laughs> Infitar, shattering the illusion, the configuration. Because that's what we're in. We're in a configuration. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Ya insan. An insan can be masculine and feminine, by the way. Ma gharrak. You know what? deluded you away from your benevolent, your kind Lord. Or either as in this de you know it derailed you from him or it deluded away from him or deluded about him. That Allah is taking us, he's this accountant who's going to be counting this and that, and we're going to be, he's, it's all about trouble and telling off, and he's like the parent who tells off the child, and he's like, You know, Allah says, <laughs> created you, he structured you for adalak, and this can mean to straighten you. Look at look at the words, or it can mean he did justice to you. Hi hi, for adalak. Fi ayi suratim ma sha arakabak. You know, in and in what form he wanted he gave you and what was that form his own form we covered that last week allah created adam in his form not an anthropomorphic form but in the form to mirror and to be an expression of the divine names on earth that's the form and if you think about it people look just think about this I was thinking about this, you know, this configuration that we're in, it's like a game, like a video game, like a virtual reality, but to us it's actual. But it's a khayal, to Allah, th there is only one true beingness, and that is Allah's being. We are a virtual being. We, we, we think we exist, and we do exist as far as we're concerned, but really... <laughs> Our wujud is, it is like, it is both existent and non-existent at the same time. It is like the reflection in the mirror. It does exist, but at the same time, does it? Because you know that, yeah, there's a reflection of me. But at the same time, you know, but that's not me, I'm here. So does the reflection exist or does it not exist? It simultaneously exists and does not exist. And such is our reality. 
Because ultimately, it is Allah and His love to be known, which we are an expression of that then. So I was thinking about this, you know, this configuration. Now you think of this like a game. And you think, well, okay, how do these players exit the game? And well, okay, well, they exit it, you know, as they die, we bury them into the ground and their bodies just disintegrate and they've exited the game. So you th think, well, okay, how can players be introduced to the game, a new player? How can we bring not only a player, but a whole identity, a whole personality, a, a being, a new... Where do they come from? Should they just come out of a vortex? Should they just come out of a... So just, just behold the configuration. So it's configured that, okay, they will emerge from within the people, <laughs> from within the womb of the woman, that they will just emerge from here. So they'll be created from almost nothing. I mean, when I say nothing, I mean, obviously, sperm and an egg, but nothing that resembles a actual being and tiny, you know, minuscule in reality or nothing like some of that. And they will then become this entity that enters this configuration then. And what they will do is they will name it. And as they name it, they it begins to grow with this, there is an eye that I am. <laughs> Ironically, the first, the commandment to Moses, that I am, that I am, that this I am emerges at that young stage then, after taking a name, taking this, and then they become, they, they pick up the language fields, the, you know, the, the symbolic order, register, the, um, imaginary, they, they develop, and then they become a participatory player within this configuration. <laughs> and then they live on until they then pass and pass through this configuration. What a, I just, I was, I was thinking like, could there be any more epic <laughs> entry and exit point? It's like, who would have thought of that? Imagine you're thinking of a configuration. You're thinking, how do you bring in characters and just spring into existence or being as... Well, well, they will come from within the other characters. <laughs> and I know that because we're so familiar with the concept, sometimes we don't ponder over it. So with that, folks, I... I hope that's of some help. I am going to um, share my the link. And if anybody wants to jump on, they can do. And um, we can have a bit of a discussion. Maybe, uh, just copy this link. Maybe about uh, yeah, 20 minutes, half hour, and then wrap this up. I wanted to also say that with regards to this hadith, um, with regards to this hadith, um, that Kuntu Kanzan Mahfiyan. Now, this hadith, um, right, I was just seeing that the stream seemed to be, um, hmm, I don't know why, because it's, you know, it's, it's not Wi Fi. So, in any case, this hadith, Kuntu Kanzan, uh, La Araf. Now, generally speaking, this hadith is not valid, and people say it's fabricated, or maybe exceptionally weak or fabricated generally. It has been brought by several people, Ibn Arabi, Ibn Abd al-Bar, many people have cited this hadith. Now, this hadith has been viewed by different scholars using different paradigms. So the muhaddithin, their approach has been that because there is no sanat, 
to this hadith, even though it's been circulating for generations. It's it's right from the very traditional of Islam that it's been coming down. But because there's no sanad, therefore it is fabricated, according to the muhaddithin. According to other scholars, that this hadith is sahih. And Ibn Arabi, and the thing I love about Ibn Arabi, another amazing fact, uh, the, 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 you know, fun fact, is when he's discussing this hadith in his Futuhat, he says that this hadith, he says, he, he says himself, and by the way, he's contrary to what some people may think, he's actually very clued up with hadith studies. He cites his own Sanad to Sahil Bukhari. He often, when he's discussing chains, he'll discuss them. He quotes his uh, uh, mashayikh in hadith. He quotes a certain chain going from the students of Abu Bakr ibn Arabi through Abu Bakr ibn Arabi, the great hafiz of hadith. He discusses when he cites hadith, he says them, and he says the sanad to them. So he's not unaware of these things. He says that this hadith, he says it is sahih, min ghayr al isnad. Okay, he says Sahih غير الإسناد But that it is not through the Sanad But بالكشف He says it is something that we have Come to learn its validity Through our or imaginal learning So through kashf Seeing into the imaginal world Now you may say, well, you know, I don't accept that. Because the imaginal world, that is the world of, you know, the unconscious mind. That is the world of dreams. That is the world of the remaining nabuwa. So the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said in a hadith that prophethood would stop except. So prophethood in the hadith, the Prophet said that a one category of prophethood will continue after me. This isn't to say people that come like, you know, Ghulam Mirza Qadiyani and these people, not at all. But Prophet said dreams. He said that dreams will remain and open, will be the realm of also prophethood, but it is not the prophethood that you're thinking like messengers. And what it means is in Arabic, the word tanabbu. Today, we don't use these words as much. And I know this is where people misunderstood Ibn Arabi as well. And we'll discuss that another time. And I know Ghamdi Saab and a few people have, you know, I, you know, they've really missed the mark, unfortunately, with people like Sheikh Ibn Arabi. Now, this hadith, which is in Sahih Bukhari and many of that dreams are 146th part of prophethood. And that dreams, this form of prophethood will remain till the day of judgment. That And it's not the kind of prophethood to become a prophet. But what it means is that there is a realm in which you do have this connection to what is being revealed to you in a way, but it's not clear. So people, sometimes they see things in dreams. Sometimes they will see the future. They will have premonitions. I mean, there's a lot of scientific studies on this. So Ibn Arabi says that looking into that realm, we have come to learn that this hadith is sahih. So that is Ibn Arabi doing full disclosure. Now, somebody may say, well, I don't accept that, and that's fine, that they, um, they may not accept the imaginal realm as a mode of learning. But there are four modes of learning that generally we do go by. And, and this is the same thing even in, in the world at large. And this is, you've got studies by people like Dr. Ian McGilchrist, who also uh, cites these four, that you've got the rational, the scientific, intuition and imagination and imagination ibn arabi will speak about that another time he is not just meaning by imagination the because in his you got you got you have to remember this is 800 years ago a lot of english terminology and this other was not there psychology is only 100 you know plus you know 120 whatever years old maybe 140 at best it's not older than that 
Ibn Arabi, when he's speaking about khayal, his khayal is encompassing all of this. The unconscious mind, the collective unconscious, the, th the registers, the symbolic register, the imaginary register, the, you know, in Lacanian psychology, he's speaking about all of this. He's not just speaking about a phantasmic uh, imagination, you know, like, oh, I picture this cup is pink. He's not speaking about that. He calls that al-khayal al-munfasil. You know, that's a detached him. That's sure. But, and we'll speak about this another time in more depth. But learning, there's two modes. We can simplify them even more, if, if you like, that you do have the rational and you have the imaginal. And the imaginal is to do with that world, the barzakh, the, the kind of world in between, the unconscious mind, the collective unconscious, the you know, where we, how we dream, these kind of things. Intuition, all of this is locked into that. So Ibn Arabi is just being very open and saying, well, this is my epistemology. Now, you can accept it. You don't need to accept it. Um, personally, I do accept it. I feel that that's fine. He's being transparent and he's telling you this is my mode, epistemological mode here. So you can accept it. and Or you can say, well, I don't. And well, one could say, well, you know, that we don't accept that because that's too, you know, wishy-washy or it's not enough. And that's fine. You know, that's the interpretation. I would say that nothing, you know, even when you take Hadith studies and the study of Isnad, you'll find that you run into, there is no cement to be found there either. And I've discussed this previously, even when you look at a Sahih Sanad, an absolutely Sahih one, and you go to the first, second layers of it, and I ask you, well, where did we get the Tawthiq for this? You know, who authenticate? So let's say when you say somebody like, um, there could be great, there could be people in the first, let's say not the, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een. How do you know that the Tabi'een were reliable? And the ones that come just after them. And you could say, well, they were in the books of Rijal. Everybody knows it. But the books of Rijal were not written until maybe 100, 150 years after them. So the people that you find doing tawthiq of them, so let's say Imam Ahmad or Abu Zur al razi or you're going to find Imam Bukhari saying such and such person in his Tariq uh, al-Kabir is trustworthy. How has he... Who, who has told him that that person is trustworthy? Now, he will source, he will cite people that are his teachers. So, for example, he might say, oh, you know, Abu Zura al-Razi said this. Now, or he might cite someone saying that. But where did they hear it from? Because they didn't meet that person either. In fact, their parents didn't even meet that person. Maybe their grandparents lived in the time of that person. So who, where is the data coming from? It's, there are blind spots, you see. It's coming from blind spots. So now there's, there's a certain amount, you know, this is the uh, incompleteness theorem. You know how you have Gödel's incompleteness theorem? Within Hadith studies, you have the incompleteness theorem. And this is it. I mean, that's how I would present it. It has an incompleteness, a, a Gadolian um, equation to it that you can't, it gets to a point where it breaks down. So the certainty you were looking for is not found in that either. I mean, it's good enough. I'm not to say, I'm not trying to knock it in saying no hadith are sound. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm trying to say is each to their own. These are not mutually exclusive. People who accept the esoteric uh, this way of is, uh, of learning within Islam, they accept Sahih Hadith as well. Of course they do. I mean, it's not, but not everybody that just accepts the way of the Muhaddithin accepts the way of the mystical. And that is, I suppose, to us, you know, we have to choose that. Other than that, I thought I'd, ex you know, I hope that's of some help. Uh, Allah bless you all. Let me share the link. And I'll bring on some people, have a quick chat. There's been a, let me see if there's a super chat. Um, 
somebody said string theorem so no so the, so theorem is usually used when something is absolute and theory where it isn't uh it's still a theory so string theory is more a theory um but yeah scientists are moving away from it i i don't know it's it's a strange one that is what well, uh it is wonderful to see you again this love and respect from brooklyn allah Allah bless you. Mercy, Lord, it's been a while. It has indeed. <laughs> Allah keep you blessed. I mean, and smiling. I mean, it's a pleasure, honestly, to see you here. Uh, somebody saying they want to join. Um, right. How much? <laughs> Not enough, you know. I need to start hitting it hard and heavy. I was trying to... Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> target a bit more, make dua for me, I mean, <laughs> I think I pulled my back, you know. <laughs> Salams, Mufti, what are your thoughts on the recent debates between Adnan Rashid and the Ahmadiyya community? I haven't seen any recent ones, and I don't, I did see one debate a while back that was, though, I and mean, when I say while, I think it's been a good few, at least, maybe was it like half a year or something, or or it feels like that, I don't know. But I saw one debate, and to be honest, I don't, hmm, you know, each to their own. I, I didn't feel that, um, uh, you know, brother Adnan, um, like I feel unfortunately the Qadiani uh, kind of got the upper hand in that. And this is the, the problem, you know, that, you know, these <laughs> Khadiyanis, right? So I think from my perspective, and I could be wrong, maybe, you know, a lot was going on with Brother Adnan. I don't know. Maybe he was, this was an unplanned visit and it was just, you know, just kind of landed on him. But he was way too underprepared. He was not ready to debate that. I don't know what his name is, the Khadiyani guy. Um, I could see he'd been going to the gym though, <laughs> but he, you know, Adnan was, I don't know if generally he is, but in that discussion that I saw, and I don't know whether he's had more since then, but in that discussion, it, it was a very poor performance. And it was, you know, it, what it did is it just made the Cardiani's argument appear as though they're strong, which they're not. They're ridiculously absurd. <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah so you know when people are debating you have to be careful you know you have to and i get it sometimes we can be you know sometimes maybe we're not expecting a debate and it becomes a debate and maybe there's a lot going on in our mind you know sometimes people are going through tough times as well and we don't know but you see when these things are being recorded and yeah and you just don't and you know and you, you may underestimate the opponent <laughs> and you know that nuksan kuch ziyada ho jata so khair right i'm going to don't overlook my super chat somebody said let me just go back see a super chat and then i've got somebody on i'll bring them on who's that hussein hussein uh a super chat, Sahab, I want to hear your thoughts about Ghulam Ahmed Parvez uh, from Pakistan who has passed. His thoughts are more aligned with you. Rehan, Allah keep you blessed for the super chat. Uh, do you mean by that Ghulam Ahmed, because there's obviously Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, we're not talking, I take it, you're not talking about him. You're talking about Parvez, the, who's associated with the kind of Quranist movement. I... You see, I've never really looked into him profoundly, but I do feel that he is, this is what I've come across, that he's misrepresented. Um, but I could be, I don't know, because I'm, I'm speaking once again without having researched this, but my impression is people say he rejected Hadith, but then I've heard that he's not, he didn't reject Hadith, he was just reasoning with them, you know, he was being more rational and being more, um so yeah that's uh in any case you know look anybody who um has done some khidma for islam allah bless them 
I mean, and, you know, and people may have got things wrong along the way. People may have made mistakes and, and we all make mistakes and none of us are perfect. But let's not, you know, this is why today's lesson was about, you know, what is it all about at the end of the day? It's not about these little things. You know, you have to look beyond that. I Was that the super chat, by the way? Um, Rehan Guman, once again, Allah, keep you blessed. Uh, quick question, should we pray three times a day like we like the, we, like the Quran teaches us, or five times? A hadith is telling us, may Allah bless you. Akhinjo uh, Shabab, uh, Allah, keep you blessed for the super chat. And right. So let me just see this indeterminate being which determines the determinants of existence, determinations of singularity one. Ah, that is, uh, yeah. You know, on a side note, people misunderstand this thing of al wujud al wahid. They think that people are, what people are saying is Allah's wujud and our wujud is together as one. They're not saying that. What they're actually saying is our wujud is the one in question. <laughs> you see, here's the irony. People that negate that, they're so certain of their own wujud that they think it's as certain as God's wujud. And in that is a folly, you know, and in all trueness, an arrogant one. That, that they fall into that, you know, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, insan, yeah, insan. You see, we, 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 we assume that this I is so aggrandized that it is, you know, me, oh, I am. You see, and the truth is our wujud is not as certain as Allah's wujud. But that is the illusion of the configuration that we're in. So, yeah, it amuses me, you know, <laughs> how insan becomes so... Uh, it's 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 amusing to, to watch. Um yeah, you know, it will be great. I will reach out to Firas Zahabi, inshallah. Let me bring back my... Um, what's this? Uh, yeah, that will be epic. Um, afterwards, somebody... I'm not sure who's trying to talk to me privately, but sure, you can reach out to me on Patreon. We can connect there. Okay, or, or, you know, I suppose if it's Patreon, you can just arrange an actual, you can book an actual consultation, a meeting. Right. Um, Kazi, Allahu Akbar, how are you? Allah keep you blessed. I mean, Imam Walid Kazi, Allahu Akbar, you know. Ah, right, let's see, let's bring some of these people on. We've got... Uh, Hussein Banjan, Assalamu alaikum, Hussein. Wa alaikum assalam, Mufti. How are you? I'm good. Look at that. I sense an, an accent right there. Is that Australian down under? Is it? Oh, most definitely is. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. How's it going? <laughs> ah, look, mate, it's not too bad in the land down under. You know, just kicking back with my kangaroo friends and all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I see these memes always, these clips where these kangaroos are just fighting with people. They're just like boxing them. And it's like, and the, and the guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I think, what the hell? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's a fun place. It's a fun place to be. But, you yeah. know, cost of living's hitting everyone in the West, as you know. Yeah. You know, here, mm. Canada, UK, all, all the, um, especially the younger True. generation, the up-and-comers, you know, they're losing hope in the future, becoming wow. a, a lot more anxious. And I think, you know, what you're talking about is really, it's really beneficial, especially for those that are looking 
you know, a house, how can it go up 50% in the last few years? You know, and, and, and people are thinking about their future and whatnot. And, you know, I've been on a similar spiritual journey over the last few years, sort of as of what you're doing, you know, going down the esoteric path and just investigating. And really, like you've been saying, you know, just being in the present, it's so beneficial and it's so soothing on that fire that burns, you know, within you, you know, because yeah. growing up in the West, you look around, you're competing with everyone, Muslims, non-Muslims, about getting stuff. Yeah. And when you're not getting that stuff, you're going on your phone to look at those that have potentially yeah. got that stuff. And, yeah. and it can just send you down a spiral of anxiety and depression. And, and really, alhamdulillah, in Islam, we have what you're talking about, this spiritual path, this spirituality. And these great, yeah. you know, masters have really managed to quell that thirst inside the human being. But it's a struggle to obtain that knowledge and to obtain that quench, quenching, you know, subhanAllah. And, you know, when I think about myself, what really quenched that was learning about Allah, becoming a knower that, you know, they say a knower of Allah, you know, because, I mean, let's face it, what's the prominent thing going around in the Muslim community is the Wahhabi Salafi movement. And that's totally opposite to what we're talking about. It's very, you know, materialistic when you look into it. And um, yeah, just for, just for myself, I, I'm so happy. You know, I've I've been, you know, especially when you brought up life's a game. I've been thinking about this recently. And and when you get to these sort of levels of you know internalization of spirituality, and and you realise. That reality isn't real, but at the same time, it is very real. You know, it's easy to sit back when you've got a fridge full of food, you've got money in the bank and go, oh, yeah, you know, reality is not real. But then, uh, you know, all you've got to do is think about our brothers and sisters in third world countries and, and imagine going to them and saying, oh, you know, reality is not real. They'll punch you in the face, <laughs> <laughs> you know, going through struggles mm. and... and, and you know, starvation and hunger. So, you know, one lesson I took from this, from, you know, the masters would say, as you ascend through this, you know, spiritual journey, it becomes sort of intoxicating and you don't want to descend to mm. the general population to help them. And they're saying the whole purpose of ascension in, in this is so you can descend and take on their burdens and to help them in their journeys, you know, and 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 yeah, that's just something. Um, you know, if anyone's interested in going down this path, it can be very um, because the satisfaction is there. It quenches that fire. It quenches that thing inside of you. It it really um, grounds you in reality. And yeah. and and that grounding, you don't want to come back to reality. You know, and. Um, but the purpose of gaining knowledge is, is to come back to the level of those of, of the general population because um yeah sorry i'm, I'm just ranting you no, know no, just, no, you're, you're it's so, a beautiful it's, thing it's 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 so true man it's that you know it's like i guess in a way that's the game isn't it it's like socrates coming back to the cave to tell yes. people well you know, there's actually this, these are just shadows and there's a world outside and, and and people, I guess it's because those who, who see it will see it, but that is the, the, that is our existence in this knowing, in this realization that you, you know, you began by saying, look, we're so caught up in just the dunya in this configuration and it's true and 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 it's so and that's the the bia of this dunya that it you know it just pulls you sucks you right in you are you, you're you're so p part and parcel of the matrix that do you you know you, you like you said you're competing you're trying to keep up oh do i want this do i want that and there's nothing wrong with gaining things 
See, Allah does not, you know, in Islam, Allah does not do them takathur in the sense that having, you know, trying to amass things and get things. Oh, I want this. Oh, you know, I want this. I want that. Oh, I like this. I like that. It's, I mean, it's sure it's a bit, you know, there's a bit of folly in it. But if you notice the them or the kind of critique that Allah mentions, it's not that this is, you know, la'anallahu takathur or this is al hakumat takathur. You know, hatta zurtamul maqabil. You know, if it's that it distracted you. Yes. That you, it was not that it was necessary like a person i feel you know if, if a person can make money i f- i do truly believe that things like money wealth they simply magnify the potency or the potential of who you are as a person you know if you are a good person you can be an even better person with more money like you will be able to help people you and if you were already somebody that was kind of very oh pulling in and you know miserly and then you will become an even more you will just do like it will make the good better and the worse worse so islam is is not but it's about that it distracted you from the real goal you know the yes. real goal was that sure do this it's part of the you know it's part of the story it's part of the music that you that you are immersed in but there is a greater objective there is a greater story unfolding which was your bond in coming to know allah in coming to know and through that you know coming to know yourself in a way because what you know man arafa nafsa arafa rabba you know is through know thyself which I, mm. I take it is you know is a lifelong journey, but it does. You're right that people they are getting depressed, they are getting, and I tell you what, this society, I, to me, it's not that these societies have. I I don't see things in a doom and gloom way that they've gone to the dogs or you know everything's ruined, and I don't see it like that. But what I do see is how you you know what you're saying. There is this anxiety, there is this depression, there is this increasing rates of it. Younger people are more depressed than older people. And it makes no sense. They grow up in affluent kind of luxury, relatively speaking. The issue is shukar. You see, because we don't have like a sense of gratitude, it it's what keeps the balance always there that we feel even when we like we have something we're grateful we don't have it we still ah oh, damn yeah. okay i really want it but you know look i'm still so much i'm still so grateful allah has given me this that's missing yeah. so when we compare with each other we you know that there's that uh, i've cited often this study of the um in psycho and it's a sociological experiment as well where they will offer a person uh like they give a person a prize of money and it's uh, with the caveat that that the other person that is with them gets let's say it's a million pounds the other person gets to say a figure that you will keep any percentage he could say half he could say one percent he could say anything he could say you get to keep five hundred thousand he could say you get to keep five thousand he could say you get nothing but whatever he offers if you accept it, you both get what the allocated amount. If you decline it, nobody gets anything. And he only gets one chance. Now, this is very telling about the human nafs. Because in those studies, they found that unless a person was offered at least about 30% of the overall at least, they would decline it. So let's just put that into logic and rationale. You see, they walked in through the door. Like if we're sitting here now and you said, you know what, give yeah, give Mufti 100,000. Give him 50,000 pounds, 50,000. I mean, that's hell of like I walked in. I'm going to walk out 50,000 pounds richer. I mean, what more could I ask? Ah, but you're going to walk out 950,000 pounds richer. So we live in comparison, unfortunately. So for me, 
the schadenfreude of knowing that you, you know, you so and so, you think you're going to give me fifty thousand and get nine hundred. I'm, I'm more happy you losing that than me gaining fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is very telling of our fitrais and our kind of this nafs within us like <laughs> yes it, it reminds me as a child you know that's how i used to you know when you play games with your friends if i was losing i would want to drag everyone down with me rather than just let them win <laughs> yeah. you know that is fascinating because that there's a verse in the quran that and on this day it will not avail you that you collectively are all damned and in mm. being punished. Bec and what the Malikia understood from this is that they said that this meant, you see, psychologically in the dunya it did avail you. Like you're saying. So therefore, in Maliki, uh, you know, traditional law and fiqh, if a person was let's say convicted of a particular crime uh let's say he, he's he's got a record of theft or something they would not allow his testimony against theft because they felt what if this verse you know this kind of psychology what if the fact because you've got it it gives you peace knowing other people are also <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, but it reminds this... me also oh sorry no no go for it go for it i was just gonna say um there's a powerful dua I remember. It says, Allah put the dunya in my hand and not in my heart. Um, I mean, it's such a beautiful dua, such a beautiful dua. And it is so true because, you know, in the heart, it's like that hadith I read earlier today that, you know, whosoever that, that he drew closer to God, Allah placed a richness in their heart. That the dunya came to them even if they Allah decreed it for them. Now, I... There's a story uh, actually told by Rumi where he says that there's a um, <laughs> that there's this person who is crying. Uh, he's, he's on the street, you know, he's, he's, he's really not crying, like really depressed and sad and, and worried, you know, preoccupied. Like you think, what's up with this guy, man? So somebody approaches him and they're on their way. Uh, to some masjid and they approach him and they say well what's going on he says i lost a dinar you know the whole gold piece is a dinar dirham was the silver piece he says i lost a, a dinar and and you know and and the person looks at him and thinks yeah salam i mean look how yeah the sense of cloud of worry upon this person so he says you know what like he thinks in his heart, he gets the idea that, look, let's make this person happy. You know, Allah will make us happy. So he gets a dinar. He goes, you know, you take my dinar. You know, Allah bless you and goes off. And this person, he goes off to pray and whatever, and he's spending his day. He comes back and the person still where he was. And he's sad and he's, you know, he's, he's kind of overwhelmed with, and he says, <laughs> yar. <laughs> he didn't say yar, but he could have, I suppose. Farsan <laughs> means friend. He says, he says, what's wrong with you? I, I saw you a while back and you lost a dinar. I gave you a dinar. And he says, yeah, that's true. He says, but I was thinking, you know, what if I had my original dinar? I would now have two dinars. <laughs> so that that's the fitra of insan <laughs> it, it really is you know yeah. and you know the flip side to that is you know i was thinking the other day you know our effort is spent so much on on, on building you know for our lives for our families for our children but yeah. if you look back in human history the tens of thousands of years that humans have been around, we we should have built to the moon. Well, However, <laughs> we haven't. There, 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 there's not really much that exists for the last couple hundred years. Sure, there's a few pyramids and, and whatnot, you know, these mega structures. Mm -hmm. But imagine all that human effort. Imagine you know, all the kings that were oppressing their people, tens and hundreds of thousands of man hours being put to whatever project they were working on, just gone, yeah. just in dust, you know? So 
So it's upon a lot. It's so true that, and I guess part of that is that we have not seen ourselves as ultimately one, as a collective, as this greater. Because in San, you see, this is this is the the beauty in San, is us, you, me, but it's like a collective noun as well, in a way used as in San, like we are a collective human story as well. Like we are our individual stories, but we are that story of, you know, where there's the human story unfolding from when Allah taught us his names, you know, the the manifestation of his names, the power the, that's within them. So, but I guess we've been disconnected and we are disconnected. I put myself in that as well, that, you know, unfortunately we, you know, in, in these day-to-day -day hurdles, it just becomes all about me, 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 me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it sure does. And was that you that posted about the hope and the hope in the mice test and the mice being dropped into the water? Did you post about that on? I I have done on a, a few occasions. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else has. has oh, well. okay. I, I I was just going to mention it just to the viewers, you know, just yeah. to show that show the power of hope, you know, especially, you know, throughout the Quran, you see the stories of people of Muslims of believers being oppressed destroyed thrown into fires or whatnot and the power of hope so you know you had that one scientist he done a test in the, in the 60s with a couple of mice he put mice in a bucket of water to see how long they could swim for a lot of them would only swim for a few minutes and then drown he done a test again the mice would swim for a few minutes he rescued the mice took them out of the water dried them for 15 minutes and then put them back into the water and keep in mind that they swam to the point of failure before he took them out. So how long do you think that those mice swam for after that? It was 60 hours because the mice had hope that they were going to be rescued. It's fun a lot, you know? Oh. So, yeah, there's it's, always it's hope. An inner game. It's an Muslims. inner game, isn't it? Yeah. It's it really inner... is, isn't it? It is, it is. There's, there is light within us that we just cannot fathom. We cannot, you know, to us, we're this, this within the, you know, this is me, that's you. But there is, that, but there is something within us that is, that we cannot. It's unbounded, and 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 from it are these things: the hope, the fight, the belief, the story. How people, human beings, are the only creatures that can suddenly change their entire story. Like yes. a person could just wake up tomorrow. If they had the realization and they could just say, you know what, enough is enough and radically change their lives. They could go from, you know, somebody that wasn't to, to somebody that's going to learn things, immerse themselves. They, they, they could just become, it's incredible what they could become. 100%. But, yeah, but no, that, that, that is insane. <laughs> you know, this, 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 what, you know, some call the third chimpanzee. Yes. When you, when you look at us, it's, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, we're not robots. We're not pre-programmed to do this, this, and this. Although we may have been doing ABC for our whole lives, and they may be bad habits. But if you were to think about it logically, if we wake up in the morning and chose consciously our actions, every human yeah. being doing something that you may want to do has those same two arms, two legs, two eyes, that you're doing yeah. so it really comes down to our choices in life and what we're what we're making and and, and you, you know I, I never grew up reading books very much you know i was more of a movie person if there was a movie oh, on the book I, I, i'm just like i, I love movies, <laughs> you know it's <laughs> i think so much of my learning has happened through work <laughs> general learning has happened through movies <laughs> you know and yeah. when you choose to to when you make better choices, your life will become better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and wow. I, I love the 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 lil akhiba. I love the what we're learning about this. The last few sessions, it, it really. I always thought that there was more to the Quran, and and, and just yeah. these conversations that you're going on. It really is expanding my knowledge oh, and especially my deep love for it. Um, Maliki Madhab, 
amazing. Thank you for introducing me to it. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> you're doing it, you're doing it. You know, start, started praying like a Maliki at home and whatnot. Allah, and, God, and yeah. I, I don't know, it just feels, subhanAllah, yeah. it, it feels natural, if that makes yeah, sense. Does, yeah. Now, you, that's you, what you it's know? about, you know, it's about that returning to nature, removing these shackles, this kind of state of nature. I don't mean nature, nature, the wilderness. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's different, but I mean Salah in a state of nature. And and there's things that the Maliki Madhab often emphasizes, even about nature, about which, OK, you know, in my I sometimes don't live up to because, you know, we're in this busy world. But they actual the Maliki teaching is that sujood should be done only on something natural ideally no i mean it doesn't invalidate the prayer but you should be done on the actual earth or grass or anything natural i mean you know here i've got a carpet you know this is our i suppose my kind of falling short but truthfully there is something very natural about the school of medina and yeah so that's, yeah, that's definitely wonderful there is there definitely there is something that really sits well with, with the soul in the school of medina um you know because you know the, the other madhabs uh, you can see how they've been institutionalized throughout the yeah. ages especially the rulings that reach us today yeah from the, from the hanafi madhab you know i've got some pakistani yeah. friends or whatnot yeah. you can and just it, tell it's totally devoid it's from very it very institutional and, and it's not to say that the malikia haven't as well been institutionalized but it's just that there's been there is still that free within them the free spirit correct there is also uh, an element like you can also see versions of it that have been institutionalized but you can still see free spirited natural versions uh, which still exist now that's been difficult with some of the other methods that the institutionalization has just drowned it all out and you do get some people trying to be a free spirit but it's a, such a, a difficult and, you know, more power to them, but it is a very difficult journey for them. But, yeah, wow, you know. So, Hussein, wow, this has been an absolute pleasure. What I was going to say is drop me a message on Instagram. Uh, yes. Let's connect there. And, yeah, and we'll stay connected, inshallah. It's inshallah. been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed you coming on today. And, really, it's been – honestly, it's been it's – been, it's a connection. It's a connection. I, I feel it. So, Allah bless you, man. Inshallah. All right, cool. future Patreon coming on, mate. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. <laughs> Allah bless you. Salamu alaikum. People, right there, that was Hussein. Um, Allah, what, what a guy. You know, this. sometimes you don't even know someone, but you... <sighs> Speaking of being, there's a poet, Urdu poet, Abdul Hamid Adam. And that's crazy, huh? Adam, the opposite of wujud, of being. And he has a poem where he says, he says, Baaz okaat kuch logon ke milne se adam, apni hasti se mulaqat ho jati hai. Wah. He says that sometimes by meeting some people, encountering them, you meet a layer of your own beingness. Apni hasti, your beingness, se mulaqat ho jati hai. So, wow. Allah bless you all. There's uh, uh, some some people, uh, thoughts on Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Brilvi. Uh, Allah bless him. I do, I think highly of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Brilvi. He was, you know, in this uh, mystical, esoteric Sufi sense, an ashik of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his tafsir bears testimony to that. I do, however, I mean, I feel that unfortunately there is such a cult around him that, you know, holds him to such a maqam that he is infallible and, you know, never like he is the ultimate. I, I don't think this is, and I could be wrong, uh, but I don't think he himself would have agreed with that. And, uh, you know, he himself was somebody who stood, you know, if anything, he stood for the love of the Prophet. And that is something that above anything, uh, you know, I would absolutely salute that. He spent his life defending the honor of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet's honor is always first. So, 
I, you know, I absolutely love uh, that and adore that about him. Does it mean that, you know, would I personally feel that all his views have to, or we have to, I don't, I don't do that kind of taqlid of him and, and notwithstanding, you know, his, his, him being a great lover of the Prophet Sallallahu I don't feel that we should have like a cultish outlook towards him where, you know, uh, let's say Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, may Allah bless his afterlife, that if, if he said it, then we have to, like, even if today something, you know, somebody said, oh, he said that the, I haven't read this, but I watched the clip. They said that uh, he said that the earth, the solar system is geocentric, that the earth, sun revolves around the sun. And because Imam Ahmad Raza Khan said it, we should today say this. I mean, this, this is a silly kind of talk. I don't know whether he said it, but even if he said it, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, you have to understand that, it is all, this is our journey to Allah. And it's to that light. And what is the true guide for us is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And along the way, they are phenomenal people. You know, just legends like Imam Malik and these, you know, giants of Islam. And then along the way, we'll get other favorites. You know, you may say Ibn Abd al-Bar and Qadi Iyad and Ibn al-Rushd and uh, Ibn al-Arabi and then Ibn al-Arabi. And you may say, you know, Abdul Karim al-Jili and you may say people like... Um, uh, Al-Lakhmi or Al-Mazari and you, you, you cook at the suqi and you come out with... And you and you may say of more recent times, you know, Allama Tamanna Imadi, and you may uh, uh, Imam Raza Ahmad Khan Brilvi, and you may, and whoever you love. And that's the same, you know, it doesn't mean it's the same with Diobandi Hazarat, you know, somebody may say uh, Allama Anwar Shah Kashmiri or uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Al Hassan. Uh, you know, Sheikh Al Hind or uh, Ashraf Ali Tanri or anybody that they've got an immense love for. That, sure, and we've all got our reasons. And look, people have gone. But to us, we need to always understand that these people would not have wanted us to think that they were, you know, become a cult of them in the sense that they were infallible. And, and I'm sure every person has something, hopefully, wonderful to contribute to this ummah. And maybe some people it's elmi tahqiq, maybe it's a commentary on a book, maybe it's something, you know, maybe it's a devotion, maybe it's, um, you know, and they've all struggled, you know, they all struggle, they all, I was uh, reading about Sheikh Mahmoud al-Hassan, uh, Sheikh al-Hind, that he, um, you know, he he was resisting the British and part of the kind of the silk uh, uh, um, kind of resistance movement, it was called the silk handkerchief or the silk letters. And But he was gaining this acceptance. So he went to, I believe, Turkey and got some people to back him. And then he went to, he, he, he went on Hajj, I believe, and he got the, uh, the Sharif of Mecca. But little did he know that the Sharif of Mecca was in cahoots with the British, as was Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab and Najdi as well. Uh, they, they were all in cahoots, but differently. And the Sharif of Mecca, as uh, uh, Sheikh Mahmoud al Hassan was t telling him, Look, we've got this support, we're going to go back. There's this movement for a resistance, and the Ottomans are with us, and you know, we're going to have this kind of resistance and rise for, and fight for our. And you know, we've got this. As he was leaving Mecca, the Sharif of Mecca, Hussein Ali, sold him out, and the British arrested Sheikh Mahmoud al Hassan and imprisoned him for a few years. and uh, I believe it was in Malta or was it in the Maldives they imprisoned him. But but look at that. You know, I mean, it's suffering for this theme. And regardless of whether we agree with their opinions or disagree sometimes, it's suffering for the sake of this theme of Allah and his messenger. And, you know, may Allah bless bless them and bless everyone, bless their afterlife, anybody who does that. And as, as to Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, like I mentioned, you know, to me, the thing that shines about him, and that's the only thing that's so, that I, you know, 
endearingly love about him was that he he stood unwaveringly for the love and the honor of the prophet even if other people may have different interpretation but you know for the love of the prophet he stood his ground and that is a lesson for us and i do believe that even today you know when we hear things like the age of aisha it is a shame you know it breaks my heart that people don't understand this yeah that it's the love of the prophet don't say these things even if it's in bukhari bukhari is not infallible you know it, it tears wallahi you know look i'm going to say this and then we'll wrap this up tonight that um Take something like this. Take there's a verse of the Quran that Ya Yulladina Amanu La Takulu Ra'ina Wakulun Dhurna Wasman that do not say Ra'ina. Saying ra ra'ina in Arabic comes from the word of Mura'a. That hey, like if I say to you, hey, you know, keep me in mind. Keep me in mind, bro. You know, or like this is to, as we say today, or say, oh, you know, don't, you know, remember me. You know, if any of this, then me, me, remember me. Ra'ina was in one way could be used like that. If I was to say to somebody, keep me in mind, or if I was to say, hey, take care of me as well, please. Or get, consider me as well. Have some consideration for me. Allah declared this haram. Why? What's what's wrong with saying Ra'i? Linguistically, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. If I said to you, please consider me, nothing wrong with that. But some of those who, you know, hated the Prophet, they started to use this as a mocking tool to mock the Prophet. They would say ra'ina. You see, another way, ra'i can be from the third form in Arabic, as in mura'a, to ra'a yu ra'i, as in consider me. But it could be from the first form to mean ra'i, which means shepherd. So they started, they realized the Prophet's companions would often say this as a, oh, ya Rasulullah, ra'ina, you know, consider us as well. Like, keep us in your good you know, consideration. So they started to use this as a mockery. Like they started to say, Ya Rasulullah, Ra'ina. As in, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rasulullah, our shepherd. And some people say that in, in the Jewish language at the time, it was also meant something else insulting. So they would use it to mean that. Allah declared this sentence haram. You can't even say something that was absolutely halal to say. Say, unzurna wasma'na. Say, look, okay, please uh, look at us and listen to us. Use different verbs. Don't use these. Why? Because some haters, some detractors, some whose hearts are engulfed in darkness are insulting our Prophet with that word. Even though the word is fine. Ra'ina in Arabic is an absolutely fine word. Allah declared it haram. How do you think about something that comes to us through Khabr al-Ahad that there's so much discussion on that they say the Prophet married a child? Even if you believed he did based on what is inconclusive evidence, you still would abandon such a thought because this is the honor of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah saying you can't even say Ra'ina. And you know who makes a big point of this as well, this very same thing that I'm saying was Allama Saeed Asad. Amazing, you know, and he was a, 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 one of the most outstanding Brilvi ulama of our time. I absolutely admire and love him. So much of his on YouTube and he took a stance for the honor of the Prophet in, in this age of Aisha. And I'm so, so glad he did. Allah bless his afterlife. He passed away now. I mean, people, I've got to wrap this short now. You know, I've got to get uh, some quick sahur in. Right, so uh, pray for me. 
Allah bless you. You know, in the Mahalusri Yusra, in the Mahalusri Yusra, ease is already on its way. Right, so just never give up, people, never give up. Right, Allah bless you all. Salaamu alaykum. And those who want to connect with me, somebody said about connecting uh, Instagram. Um, yeah, you can email me. You can, uh, I don't really check Facebook. Um, and Patreon, go on Patreon, of course. You know, you can, I'm sure you can still message me on Patreon without even being a Patreon. So you can. But yeah, um, and then you'll have access to the Discord if you want. And cool. Allah bless you all and keep you all always smiling. Right. So there it is. That's the Patreon thing in the bottom right hand corner. But this beautiful verse. Ya yu al insan ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Salamun alaykum wa khudafis.